Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering Module 2 Vapor Power System Part 1. Now, in this lecture number 4, we are going to explore the following topics. First one is vapor cycle exergy analysis. Till this point of time, we have analyzed exhaustively the Rankine cycle. Now, in order to study the performance of the cycle, we want to do the exergy analysis component wise. So, important components for Rankine cycle we can think of as a boiler and this can be modeled as a heat exchanger unit. Then we have other components like turbines, pumps and condensers. So, for these components we will try to explore what are the expressions for exergy and in a Rankine cycle how you are going to evaluate the complete exergy analysis. Now, apart from this, this will almost complete this vapor cycle analysis thermodynamically, but we will try to explore other vapor power cycles that operate on Rankine cycles, but with certain differences. First one is working fluid and organic cycle. So, basically in, uh, in our analysis so far, we have told that working fluid is water and steam, but there are cycles where uh, thermodynamic cycles where working fluids can be changed and uh, through some organic substances. So, we call them as organic cycles based on Rankine cycles. Then we have other vapor power cycles here also we can have a multiple working fluids like one case we can have water and in other situations we can have some other fluids uh, like some of them can be uh, organic fluids. Then we have the steam cycle that is operated for nuclear power plants. So, Rankine cycle is almost a very common for nuclear power plant applications where it the uh, it supplies steam for the coolant of the nuclear power plant. Then we have low temperature cycles. There are certain situations like where we are going to explore where there is a possibility of exploring energy from low temperature environment. For example, we can think of solar radiation getting absorbed in a pond and such a things we can say solar pond. There are uh, some geothermal fluids uh, which is underground water. I mean under in underground there are uh, if water is considered its temperature may be high. So, if you explore geothermal energy uh, and in which uh, which uses water as one such working fluid, then we can use the temperature of water as one of the medium or a source of boiler. Then subsequently we have to use some other working fluids which that operates in the uh, low temperature cycles. That means, we can think of various refrigerants. The other concept that goes is uh, cogenerations. So, this, but this is a concept where we think of uh, integrating uh, two or more power generation systems for variety of applications. One such instance could be the combination, combination of a gas turbine plant and steam power plant, other may be some kind of uh, extraction steam extraction plant which can be utilized for uh, um, various heating systems. So, such uh, models they work on cogeneration uh, systems. So, we will try to touch upon the basics of these other vapor power cycles. Now, let us go to our first topic uh, which is vapor cycle exergy analysis. So, before you go for this exergy analysis for uh, steam power systems, let us try to understand what is the concept of ex exergy. So, exergy in thermodynamic viewpoint uh, is considered as one of the property like energy, but it has a different meaning. So, uh, when you say energy in thermodynamic viewpoint, we say either it is available in the form of heat or work and in second law analysis says that heat cannot be completely converted to work. 
work form uh, which means there is some potential of uh, that means there is a certain potential that heat can be converted to certain extent and on top of that when you integrate these systems with environment then we need to view this system as well as environment together. Now, system can be considered as the best potential of work when it reaches the final thermodynamic conditions which is certainly at the dead state. So, if you look at this particular system, if you say there is a closed system and it, this system has certain boundary, we say it is a system boundary and this system can interact with the environment and the environment condition is at uh, pressure P naught and temperature T naught and it can through these things it can work together um, the system and environment can be uh, considered as to work together in which heat and wo work interactions is possible. Now, if you uh, if you take the system and surrounding together and bring it as a combined systems. Okay? and uh, where uh, the system and surrounding work together to produce the energy in the form of work. So, we say that the work potential of the combined system that is W c and that can be viewed as a, a rotation of a shaft or rising a weight or it can be considered as electric energy. So, basically speaking we are considering the system and the surrounding together and try to find out the work potential of the combined systems and how long this work uh, potential or work delivery can be possible when the system finally reaches to the dead state or environment. So, the potential to develop the work uh, is known as the exergy and other way we can view that if a dead state can reach to the the system state, then we regard this minimum theoretical work as its work potential uh, to bring the dead state to a given state. So, this view or this concept leads to the fact of finding the work potential of a given system. So, there are more details are also available in the basic thermodynamic course, but here when the system becomes is brought to the dead state and we view this as a combined systems and try to find out what is the work potential. So, uh, this is nothing but if you say the total energy of the combined system is E consisting of internal energy, potential energy and kinetic energy, its work potential can be expressed as the change of internal energy and uh, the work that means uh, uh, plus uh, that means this is the, the U plus P B something called as flow work, then uh, the uh, difference in the kinetic energy and potential energy and the, uh, the term that is associated with the entropy change for the combined systems. So, basically if you take this as a work potential and exergy is termed as the maximum work potential, then obviously the uh, final term becomes 0. So, you can find out the exergy of a systems subsequently per unit mass when you say we find the exergy specific exergy. So, this is the working formula to find out the exergy of a systems by considering system and surrounding together. Now, here P 0 subscript 0 stands for the conditions of environment and in our all our uh, dead state situations we say P 0 as 1 bar and T 0 is 25 degree centigrade. So, this is the dead state conditions in which we are going to work upon. So, that means whatever work potential has to be calculated till this final pressure and temperature uh, the system reaches to the uh, dead state. Then moving further we need to quantify the exergy uh, by a parameter something called as exergetic efficiency this is some something similar to the efficiency which is defined in the Carnot cycle, but here little bit of difference that we are need to find out. So, let us try to understand that uh, we have a systems consisting of its boundary and it is uh, receiving some heat Q dot S and by receiving this heat 
system rejects, uh, system does some useful work in the form of q dot u and uh, uh, heat which is going to lost which is known as q1. So, while uh, basically speaking, so q a should be q, q1 uh, plus q dot, q1 dot considers for loss and q dot is considered as the energy utilization. Now, if you want to find out the work potential for, so obviously when you calculate the efficiency of this particular systems, so it is nothing but the ratio of q dot u by q dot s, that means energy which is being utilized divided by energy, uh, heat uh, energy which is being supplied. So, this is what we known as uh, uh, efficiency of this system. But uh, if you want to find out the exergetic efficiency, then we need to find out what is this work potential for this q u means energy what is the work potential. Because this q u is not taken has not taken into account the surrounding conditions which is p naught is 1 bar and T naught is 25 degree centigrade. So, to considering this as a dead state conditions, if you want to find out what is the work potential for this q dot u, we can uh, find out this through our expressions from the Carnot cycles. So, work potential for uh, this q u will be 1 minus T 0 by T u into q. Similarly, work potential for q dot s we can write it as 1 minus t 0 by t s and this is nothing but we get the expressions from the um, Carnot efficiency. So, um, now considering this, uh, this uh, expressions can be now rewritten as a exergetic efficiency can now be rewritten as uh, efficiency of the systems multiplied by another term that is 1 minus t 0 by t u divided by 1 minus t 0 by t s and obviously, uh, this since efficiency is always less than 1, the exergetic efficiency will also be less than 1. So, this is how you calculate the exergetic efficiency. Now, uh, in our uh, term, uh, we consider uh, uh, when you take into account a vapor power systems, we are now going to work on this exergetic efficiency. So, the components involved here are turbines, pumps, then we have heat exchanger, we have condensers. So, all these things are uh, involved uh, and they are considered as the steady flow devices. So, our main role for uh, this discussion would be to find out the how you are going to define the exergetic efficiency for different components. So, we can say that there is a decrease in the flow exergy for turbines from inlet to exit of the turbines and there is a increase in the uh, flow exergy from inlet to exit of the for the compressors and pumps. Obviously, we are going for pumps only. So, that is increase in the exergy. Now, for heat exchanger in our say we say heat exchanger typically model as typically analogous for a boiler where hot uh, stream supply exergy to the cold stream as well as the exergy is also destroyed. So, basically in a boiler what happens heat is being supplied to the systems through some certain processes uh, or this through the combustion products. Uh, so, thereby uh, some exergy is being carried into the systems and exergy is being carried out by the systems. So, we are going to model that way. Now, here when you talk about the heat exchanger unit there are two possibilities one is the fluids mixed together. Like if you say one particular counter flow arrangement, we have a hot stream that is coming in and which is going out as a cold stream and uh, another uh, channel we have a cold stream which is entering and it is going out. Uh, so, in through this process the cold fluid is receiving heat from this hot fluid and, uh, and of course, they do not mix each other and their flow rates are also different. That means, cold stream has a different flow rate can have and hot stream has a different flow rate. But in other types uh, type of arrangement there can be possibilities uh, that hot stream is coming and cold stream is coming 
and it goes as a mixed stream that means both the fluids are mixing together. So, we can here we can say mass balance as m1 and m2 that addition of m1 and m2 gives the uh, m3. So, accordingly the term of for the exergetic efficiency for different components we can find out. So, here uh, you start with an expression specific exergy and this specific exergy term we have to apply it for different components and if you apply for the turbines we can find out what is the exergy uh, flow coming into this and what is exergy going out of the turbines. So, that is the bottom and, and if and what is the actual work output per unit mass is we are getting from the turbine. So, this gives this ratio gives the exergetic efficiency for turbines for pumps its expression is completely reverse because uh, uh, the pumps uh, require work as a input. And now, for heat exchangers the expressions are defined through the heat carried by the working fluid of hot stream and heat being rejected to the cold streams. Uh, here the, uh, the expressions are slightly changed based on this mass balance. So, these are the working formula for exergy analysis and in our subsequent discussions we will see how these formulas can, uh, can be used to solve some problems. Then let us start with the first unit like in our exergy analysis if you say it is a heat exchanger unit. In our perspective of vapor power systems it is considered as a boiler. So, in our analysis we simply said that heat is being fed uh, to the boiler. But how this heat is being fed? To have certain insight into this particular philosophy, what we model this as a it is a model as a heat exchanger unit, and in fact, uh, heat comes from a fuel uh, and uh, by burning like coal or some other fluids of some uh, petrol, diesels from in IC engines, by burning this we get the gaseous products of combustion, and that enters and it may be temperature is very high here that enters to the boiler unit and uh, only difference is that of course, uh, this operates at that boiler pressure and when it enters it gives the heat to the working fluid uh, uh, for this vapor power cycle and this is nothing but your liquid water uh, which is enters in a counter flow arrangement in this manner. So, here if you look at the boiler the uh, working fluid that is water enters at state 4 and it goes at state 1. So, from 4 to 1 its enthalpy changes and it receives heat from the gaseous products of combustion. So, this is how when you talk about the heat exchanger unit we need to find out what is the exergy is being carried out by these gaseous products and typically in, in the case of absence of data this products of combustion can be modeled in a more appropriate manner by uh, using air. And this is being carried into these systems and in other side of the story is that the heat exergy which is carried out by the water from the heat exchanger units. So, the net effect will give you the exergetic efficiency and remember while talking this analysis we still assume that dead state conditions is 1 bar and 25 degree centigrade. And the similar way we, uh, we can calculate the exergy for each of the stream. And uh, 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 this is how we calculate one thing is that since uh, for this considering this heat exchanger unit we can say that uh, this uh, that the combustion products can be modeled as a, uh, a air. If we model this as a air and you say its mass flow rate is m dot a and remove this mass flow rate is also conserved and side by side if you say steam is being modeled. So, m 4 uh, that is uh, uh, steam that is entering and steam that is leaving they are same and and we say that is uh, m dot. Now, considering this we calculate the exergy uh, net rate of exergy carried into the heat exchanger by the gaseous streams that is m dot a e f i minus e f e and this is the working formula for the specific exergy 
and similar way we can find out the net exergy carried by the heat exchanger uh, through this through the work, uh, water streams. So, calculating both the parameters we can find out the rate of exergy destruction and subsequently exergetic efficiency for the heat exchanger. And in our vapor power term we say it is exergetic efficiency for boiler. And in similar way we can model it for other individual components like turbines, then we have pumps. So, both of them can be modeled in a similar manner, but for condenser we think that uh, this is similar to boiler, but with a little bit of difference. Here what happens the working fluid and enters to the condenser at state 2 and leaves stage 3 and the during this condensing process heat is being carried out by this cooling water and this cooling water. So, we say that m dot is the steam that is being uh, or fluid that is being circulated within this vapor power cycle and heat from this m dot uh, fluid is being taken out by cooling water m dot C w and which is entering at some state and leaving at some other states. So, we can do in the same way that uh, when you say model this stream 1 liquid uh, two phase liquid vapor mixture enters and the condensate is existing other stream can be separate cooling water is entering and exiting at known temperature and pressures. And again here also while modeling this we assume that it is 25 degree centigrade and 1 bar. The similar way we analyze it for uh, boiler we can find out the exergetic efficiency for condenser. But uh, for pumps and all uh, uh, there are direct expressions which can be utilized that exergy destruction in the turbines based on the thermodynamic data at the states points. Okay. So, we will see how these formulas are being used in while solving the problems. Okay. So, this is all about the exergy analysis. Now, we will move on to other vapor power cycles. So, the first segment of, of this discussion is that we need to talk about something on working fluid and organic cycles, um, organic cycle which means that in a conventional systems where water is the main working fluid in a Rankine cycle and there we use the concept like reheat, superheating and with these techniques uh, there are certain limit that we can go up to uh, certain point and that is uh, restricted by the critical point that is the peak point of this uh, dome. So, we can keep on increasing the temperatures till we reach the critical point, but uh, that critical point uh, uh, has also restrictions on the type of material that are being used. Now, to reach this critical point many a times your working materials has certain uh, metallurgical disadvantage or limitations. Uh, there will be thermal endurance of the materials for which we cannot go beyond this critical point. So, there the uh, role of Rankine cycle is restricted only because uh, although there is a thermodynamic possibilities that we can go up, but the material restrictions does not allow to go for this. So, in such cases what we expect is that we explore some uh, cycles and which is operated as supercritical cycles. That means, uh, instead of going through these domes we and for example, if you go for a critical pressure of water then you have to create an ambience of 22.1 mega Pascal or higher to go from directly from uh, water to steams, but there there is a restriction that we cannot achieve this in a, a conventional uh, through this conventional materials. So, for that regions if you want to go from liquid to uh, steam directly without crossing this uh, liquid vapor uh, region, then we have to think of the cycle which is being operated on supercritical cycle. But there to do that your uh, the material restrictions poses that um, um, some limitations and because of which 
we have to choose uh, some working fluids for which this critical can pressure can be less. That means, we can operate uh, we can operate Rankine cycle in a supercritical manner that means, directly going from liquid to vapor without going through this liquid vapor regions and for that regions what we have to choose is that we have to change our working fluids and there are some substances typically they fall under the category as organic substances. They are nothing but the mixture of hydrocarbons, refrigerants, ammonia or silicon oil and such substance has the capability for going from liquid state to the vapor state directly without crossing this liquid vapor regions and that too they can operate relatively less critical pressures. And when they operate relatively late critical pressures, then uh, of course, temperature goes down. Then in that way, we can uh, the metallurgical difficulties of materials is being taken care. And uh, such, uh, such cycles has many advantages because they have a low boiling point uh, and uh, the, which allows this Rankine cycle to produce power even from low temperature sources such as industrial weight, geothermal water, uh, hot geothermal hot water and fluids heated through the solar collectors, but they have high cost uh, per unit power because they incur high cost per unit power as compared to conventional power plants. But the fuel cost is considerably lower, so that gives rise to higher thermal efficiency. And of course, when there is a less fuel is used, so the supercritical plants have a less uh, environmental impact. Then we will move on to another type of cycle that is uh, binary vapor cycles. So, here the vapor power cycle has uh, uh, the concepts that whether in a given cycle can you think of using uh, more than one working fluid. So, if you want to see more than that means, we try to decouple the systems such a way that two uh, um, turbines can be used and each turbine will uh, for each turbine the working fluid will be different. For example, a decouple arrangement is shown here and we call this as a binary vapor cycles. To understand the cycle first let us see that what this, th what this means thermodynamically to us. In fact, we here we draw the two uh, domes that is one dome uh, for one working fluid, other dome fee for different working fluid on a single plot. So, if you see that a one cycle operates in a uh, one cycle that Rankine cycle which operates as A, B, C, D uh, then A that is in this cycle and other one operates as uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1. Okay. So, we call them as a, a, a bottoming cycle and other is called as topping cycle. So, basic difference between these two is that uh, for both of them the common thing is that boiler unit and condenser unit. So, what it says is that for, top, for, for topping cycle the condensing unit that is from 2 to 3 state point from 2 to 3 will act as a boiler unit for the bottoming cycle that is uh, A, B, C, D, A. So, through this process what happens the working fluid rejects the heat working fluid from topping cycle rejects the heat and that is being taken out taken by the bottoming cycle. So, considering this as a working model thermodynamically we view and here also you see that the power unit that comes as W 1 to 1 part and W A B uh, as second part. So, there are two power turbines. So, here the mod the thermodynamic model here looks like here that we have a topping cycle and we have a bottoming cycle. So, the bottoming cycle works as A B C D E. Uh, a, B, C, D, A and um, the which means that 
the for the topping cycle conductor works as a bottoming cycle boiler and both of them have a same unit and two power units WT1 and WT2 comes into picture. And here other feature is that but both of them you have a common steam generation unit. And in one case we say we say it is a um, conventional fuel based arrangement other is we say it is a superheater uh, systems. That means one, one case we can say uh, the steam generation units consist of a boiler plus a superheater unit and the superheater unit is for bottoming cycle and the uh, conventional cycle work on a topping cycle. Okay. Then uh, uh, there are this and through this process what uh, advantage we get the combined cycle has higher average temperature of heat additions and lower average temperature of heat e rejections. And of course, thermal efficiency is greater from the either cycles that means combined thermal efficiency is higher than that of either cycle. The next cycle that we normally use it for uh, nuclear power plants. So, here the schematic diagram what we have is turbine, we have uh, turbines, we have condenser, we have uh, boiler. So, uh, what happens is that the here, here uh, this, this work as a Rankine cycle uh, using the uh, common uh, steam uh, as a similar to the steam power plant. So, basically the reactor coolant gives heat to this uh, Rankine cycle and which acts as a steam boiler to produce the power. And since uh, uh, that means that means what we see is that we have a primary fluid which is water and we have a secondary fluid which is circulated here. Uh, and the upper limit for this primary uh, the upper limit for this working fluid would be T max. Now, we operate the Rankine cycle in a similar manner because this heat exchanger unit we call this as a steam boiler for this uh, Rankine cycle using water. And for the secondary fluid if you look at uh, the temperature enthalpy diagram says that secondary fluid rejects the heat. So, its temperature falls down and it is being taken away by the steam. But one particular time we will have to see that what is this uh, the curve looks like. So, there is a upper limit that the, uh, the secondary fluid can work and uh, the temperature difference at one critical uh, one uh, point which is uh, in the saturated liquid dome and that temperature difference is known as pinch point. So, um, uh, we define a point which we call as a pinch point which is specified such that temperature of the secondary fluid is slightly higher than the second temperature saturated temperature of the steam. This is one aspect of other aspect is that permissible maximum temperatures and that is restricted by the secondary fluid uh, leaving temperature and which is below the critical temperature of the steam. So, the if you say the, uh, the uh, that means if you say uh, the temperature of water critical point is here and this T maximum operatable temperature would be somewhere below than this. And of course, the line the slope of this line for the secondary fluid and the temperature enthalpy diagrams can be uh, changed by considering the mass flow rate. So, if you are increasing or decreasing the mass flow rate this lines can uh, the slope of the line can be changed. And uh, that again uh, gives the judgment what should be the pinch point for the operational conditions. Then there is another concept called as low temperature power cycles. So, normally low temperature power cycles use uh, different waste energies, renewable energies and which involves similar way turbines, condenser, pump and there is a low temperature source. And this low temperature source could be a solar pond which means where the solar radiations are observed. Other can be a hot water from a geothermal reservoir or it can be a considered as ocean thermal energy. And here the operating limits normally for this kind of applications is between 20 degree centigrade to 
90 degree centigrade. So, obviously, we cannot use water as a working fluid for this cycles. So, you have to use think about some kind of refrigerants like R134A is one such cases and this can operate at uh, pressure ratios in the range of 32.4 bar to 5.72 bar. So, this uh, particular number tells you that by considering different refrigerant as a power cycle, uh, one can think of uh, Rankine cycle to operate in a low temperature power cycle. The last segment uh, of uh, this other vapor power cycle is something on cogenerations. Cogeneration is a concept where we say that two or more systems, uh, power systems can be integrated together to, uh, to have the need based applications. So, in this particular figure, uh, what it says is that a gas turbine power plant is integrated with the vapor power cycles. So, that means, in a gas turbine power plant unit, whatever uh, exhaust from the turbine is being utilized partially as a heat recovery stream generator unit. And here, there are two power sources that comes in, one is gaseous sources that means from the gas power plant, other is from the vapor power plants. So, here we say it is a steam or water and here the working fluid is air. So, this is one aspect where two power plants are combined. Other way of looking at is uh, uh, extraction plant. So, extraction plant means that uh, you, you, you have all come across the regenerative cycles where we see that some part of steam is being extracted uh, at some uh, different states or uh, some states of the during the expansion phase in the turbine. So, what we do is that uh, we can think of meeting different heating loads in a flexible manner by extracting steams at different segment of the power plants. So, the such figure, such concept we call as a extraction plant. I mean here the applic it is based on application oriented. For example, we can extract some of the steam from a turbine and try to uh, use it for some heating unit, for example, heating of water as a one of the essential requirement for a community. So, this can also cater, uh, this particular concept also works in the mode of cogenerations. So, with this we complete our discussions on exergy analysis and different vapor power plants. Now, we will try to solve a numerical problems based on our discussions for a vapor power system. So, the first problem uh, here I am just uh, taken the uh, some schematic figure in which uh, I have prepared a data sheets. What it means? We have a conventional vapor power systems operating water as a working fluid and this uh, it operates on a Rankine cycle and the cycle has components like boiler, turbine, condenser and pump. And in our previous discussions, we have done the complete cycle analysis and for this complete cycle analysis based on the data given, one can find out all possible points for this cycle. So, uh, that means first we have to use the operating pressures and using the operating pressures and the condition of the steam at each component and with the use of steam tables, one can find out the thermodynamic states for each of the uh, components. So, here the complete analysis has already been done. I mean in one of the problems in our previous lectures, we solved similar problems. So, here I need to summarize that when a uh, vapor power cycle operates at these states like state 1 which nothing but entry for the turbine and it is at saturated vapor at this conditions that means at this state we have 8 mega Pascal 2758 kilojoule per, per kg enthalpy and 5.74 kilojoule per kg entropy. Similarly, for state 2 when it goes out that means entry for condenser and exit for turbine which is a liquid vapor mixture and this is at lower pressure 0 0.008 mega Pascal 
1939 kilojoule per kg enthalpy, entropy as 6.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. And overall, simi similar way, we have state 3 is saturated liquid and state 4 is almost pure liquid, that means subcooled region liquid. So, these the values of pressure, uh, enthalpies, and entropies are given. Another additional information that we say is that the net output power output for the power cycle is 85. So, this is turbine work we can find out 85 megawatt. Now, while doing this analysis, uh, what we see is that we supply this Q in as a heat exchanger unit by using some combustion products and we will see that how this combustion products is modeled. So, we can think of this particular boiler unit as a heat exchanger unit in which your uh, one unit uh, your um, the uh, combustion products comes at state uh, 1177 degree centigrade that is inlet state and exit that goes out as uh, at uh, 527 degree centigrade and this is at again 1 atmosphere. We say it is a heat exchanger unit and that is model in terms of boiler. Now, what while doing so this releases heat to the steam which is entering in a counter flow manner. Now, here uh, the water that is at state uh, 4 which is enters and that state 4 is a liquid and it goes as uh, uh, saturated vapor and when it goes this occurs at a pressure of 8 mega Pascal. So, this condition is at 1. So, here and here the main condition is that both the fluids they do not mix each other and this heat uh, exchanger unit can be models. So, for that reason first thing that you to do that uh, we need to find out uh, for this steam flow rate what is the requirement for uh, the uh, combustion products and here we can say that as assume that it can be modeled as data from the air and this air data we get for these conditions and for which uh, you have this entropy at inlet state and entropy at the exit state. So, a quick look of uh, energy balance that gives that m dot a into h i minus h e plus m dot into uh, h 4 minus h 1 is equal to 0. And here uh, we say that uh, this uh, m dot a is for uh, combustion product, m dot is for steam. Now, from this equations we can find a ratio m dot a by m dot is equal to h 1 minus h 4 divided by h i minus h e. So, the data from from the data we say 2758 minus 183 divided by 1457 minus 805. So, this ratio turns out to be 3.95 and since we know m dot so we say M, uh, m dot is 125 kg per second. So, that we get m dot a mass of air requirement would be 494 kg per second. So, this part once you do then we are now prepared for the first answering the first uh, thing that is net rate of exergy 
carried into the heat exchange unit by the gaseous streams. So, let us understand our expressions for exergy analysis that is if I write E dot F for air that is nothing but M dot A E F A F I minus E F F E. So, this will be M dot A we can recall our expression what is the specific exergy at inlet and outlet that can be written as H i minus H e uh, minus T 0 into S i minus S e. And since it is we can model this enthalpy for air, so we can write A charge C p times T for air. So, we know temperature we know T i, so this will give you H i and we know uh, T e this will give you H e. So, H i and H e we can calculate as uh, H i is your 1457 kilo joule per kg H e is, is 805. Of course, S i S e and S i data is already given here. So, we can find out E dot F a is equal to M dot A already it is 494 H i is 1457 minus 805 T 0 is 225 degree centigrade that is 298 into 3.4 minus 2.7. So, E dot F a can be calculated as 219040 kilo joule per second. So, approximately exergy carried by the air stream is into this heat exchanger unit or boiler unit is approximately 219 megawatt. And of course, this is being taken away by the steam. So, next part is for the steam. So, you say E dot F W that is net exergy uh, carried away by the water streams that is M dot here you have to use the mass flow rate for steam and this is exergy of the steam at state 1 minus exergy of the steam at state 4. So, this is can be rewritten as similar way H 1 minus H 4 into M dot uh, into M dot minus T 0 into S 1 minus S 4. So, we have all the data of enthalpy at state 1 and 4, entropy at state 1 and 4. So, this will give you exergy carried away by the water stream will be 125 into 2758 minus 183 minus 298 into S1 minus S4 5.74 minus 0 0.92. So, this number is 142375 kilo joule per kg. So, it is approximately only 142 units of exergy is being taken away. Then from this uh, we can find out uh, exergy destruction that is E f uh, uh, air minus E f water. So, difference between these two is 77 megawatt. Then exergetic efficiency. So, epsilon uh, b that means for the boiler. So, it is nothing but m dot e f 1 minus e f 4 divided by m dot a e f i minus e f e. So, this number is ratio of 142 divided by 219. So, exergetic efficiency for the boiler is 0.64. So, approximately it is 
64 percent. That means boiler is uh, has uh, you has used 64 percent of the uh, uh, of exergetic efficiency. Then we will move on to uh, turbines and pumps. For turbines, we can directly write down exergy efficient exergy recarried in the turbine that is E the exergy destruction for the turbine. by simple expressions that is T 0 into uh, m dot into T 0 into for turbine state is uh, S 1 minus S 2 uh, that is S 2 minus S 1. So, uh, S 2 minus S 1 we can m dot is 125 T 0 is 298 and S 2 minus S 1 is 6.2 minus 5.74. So, this will give you for turbine exergy, exergy carried uh, by the fluid in the turbine or exergy destruction in the turbine as uh, 171.35 kilojoule per second. So, approximately one, uh, 17 megawatt. Remember, this is the exergy destruction. And if you calculate exergetic efficiency for uh, epsilon turbine, that is nothing but your WCV divided by m dot or uh, like W cycle divided by W dot cycle plus E d turbine. So, this is in our cycle it is 85 will be 85 divided by 85 plus 17. So, the ratio will be 83 percent. So, exergetic efficiency is 83 percent which is quite good and similarly for pumps and in the power plants uh, the pumps normally takes the least energy or negligible energy. So, just for the sake of calculation if you just try to calculate exergy destruction for the pump will be m dot T 0 into S 4 minus S 3. So, as per the numbers you can say this number the entropy difference is quite low. So, it is 125 into 298 uh, 0.92 minus 0 0.9. So, this number turns out to be 3.7 kilojoule per second which is quite low or approximately 0.003 megawatt. That means, pumps take least energy. So, of course, if you say exergetic efficiency it is almost uh, nil negligible. Then we will move on to last component that is condensing unit. So, in a condensing unit one can think of this modeling as because if you look at this condensing unit that is a separate water stream. So, in which uh, we have the steam or uh, which is liquid plus vapor mixer enters at state 2 and here condensing steam that is uh, leaves at state 3 which is saturated liquid. And here he, this is this is giving heat to the cooling water. And the data sheet for this cooling water is that cooling water enters at 38 degree centigrade and leaves at 18 degree centigrade. this mass flow rate of this cooling water which is given here as 2500 kg per seconds. So, this analysis is will be modeled by similar way the way you did it for boiler. So, one can write out the first term that is net exergy carried by the cooling tower. 
so we say e dot f cooling uh, cooling water as m dot c w into e f e minus e f i that is m dot c w h e minus h i minus t 0 into s c minus s i. So, by inserting the number what we write 2500 kg per second multiplied by since it is water h can be modeled as C p times T. So, it is 4.2 into temperature difference 38 minus 18 minus 298 entropy data will give you 0 0.5 minus 0 0.22. So, E dot F for cooling water would be approximately uh, 14 1400 kilojoule per second or close to 14 1.4 megawatt. Then next term we say we need to find out exergy destruction. So, exergy destruction we can write down as uh, uh, E d as T 0 into sigma C v and this is nothing but control volume for the uh, condenser unit. So, that can be written as T 0 times m dot S 3 minus S 2 that is combined effect of steam as well as the cooling water. Cooling water is m dot C w into S c minus S i. By inserting this number we say exergy destruction as 298 into 125 for steam that is 0 point difference is entropy difference is 0 0.9 minus uh, 6.2 then plus 2500 into 0 0.5 minus 0 0.22. So, by calculating this number we say the exergy destruction is 11175 kilo joule per second which is approximately 11 point 175 megawatt. So, exergy destruction in the condensing unit or condenser is 11.175 megawatt. Then we are now able to find out the exergetic efficiency for the condenser. So, we say epsilon c as T 0 into m dot S 3 minus S 2 divided by T 0 into m dot C w minus into S e minus S i. So, this is nothing but these two separate terms which is calculated in this uh, um, in the exergy destructions. So, this number when you insert it is 191 197 425 divided by 208600 so epsi uh, so you say exergetic efficiency per condensing unit is about 90, 0.94 or approximately 94% so it means that we have the uh, this gives you the combined effect of a vapor power systems uh, whether we are uh, this complete power cycle integrated with uh, uh, dead state at P 0 and T 0 this combined systems has efficiency we can find out for component wise as well as the, the um, when they work together we can find out the uh, component efficiency of uh, component uh, exergetic efficiency of each component when they work together. So, with this I conclude thank you for your attention.